Now let's do a little bit of qualitative practice. So we're not going to do any calculations, just working with the concepts. So suppose we have, here's the Earth and the Moon. The things you're going to need to be able to do for the qualitative practice are draw the acceleration vector on a picture. So here's the Earth and the Moon. The acceleration we just found out was towards the center. So this would be the acceleration vector. Then you'll need to be able to draw a free body diagram for the object. So for the moon, when it's at that position, the force of gravity is the only force on the moon. So this would be my free body diagram. And just sometimes it is helpful to draw yourself a... Whoops, that's not the center of the circle. Sometimes it's helpful to draw the circle on, um, on your free body diagram. And the last step is to write Newton's second law for the center pointing direction. Okay, so Newton's second law is F net equals MA, but we want to write it for the center pointing direction. So I'm going to put a little C here to mean center pointing. Well, what is my net force in the center pointing direction? I have only one force, so that would be Fg. So substitute that for your net force equals the mass times the acceleration. And that's the result. What about a car going around a curve? So here's the car. It's moving away from me, so I'm, I'm seeing the back of the car moving that way. We need to draw our acceleration vector. So this is the center of the circle. So the acceleration is this way. Next step is what are the forces on the car when it's at that point? Well, drawing a side view picture, we would have, so looking at the car from behind, you have the normal force of the ground pointing up, force of gravity down, but there must be some force pulling towards the center of the circle that's keeping it going in a circle. So it's not attached to a string, so it can't be FT. Um, there's not any kind of a surface, like a wall, pushing it towards the center, so it can't be FN. Uh, it's not gravitationally attracted, because there's not some huge object like the Earth over there. So what could it be? Well, if you think about what happens on an icy day, you uh, don't, aren't able to make curves quite so well. So on an icy day, you have very little friction. It's very hard to make turns. That gives us a clue that the force here pulling this car inward is actually the force of friction. So the force of friction is this direction towards the center of the circle. If you remove that force, the car would continue to go on in a straight line, not staying in the curved path. So now writing Newton's second law for the center pointing direction I have basically a, cent a, a direction that's along the radius and a direction that's in the y direction. So this is my center pointing direction. And towards the center of the circle will always be our positive for that axis. So I have force of friction, which is towards the center, equals m times the acceleration. Let's do one that has more than one force. Um, let's do an object that's... Um, how about an object, a uh, object being twirled on the end of a string? So here's a ball on a string, and it's going around in a circle. And here it is at the highest point. So acceleration vector towards the center of the circle. What about the forces on that mass? What forces are acting on it at the top of the circle? Well, force of gravity pulling down. Um, friction? Probably not. Uh, normal force? Um, no, there's no surfaces pushing on it. What about tension? Is there any tension in the string? Well, if the string is not loose, it has some tension. So the tension, the string would be pulling down on it at that moment. And I don't know how big that force would be, but it's down. Any other forces? Nothing pushing sideways on it. So that's all the forces. Now let's write Newton's second law. Okay, remember the circle looks like this. 
So my axis, this is my center pointing axis. Positive is towards the center of the circle. Negative would be the other way. So you take all your forces towards the center minus any forces that are away from the center. So FG plus FT, both of those are towards the center, equals MAC. So here, the net force towards the center is a combination of two forces. What if the object was at the bottom of the circle? I'll let you draw the acceleration vector. But let's draw the forces. So the string is going to be pulling up on it. And gravity is pulling down. Now how big should I draw gravity? Well, I know I have to have an acceleration towards the center, which means that I have to have a net force towards the center. So my force this way has to be bigger than my force this way, because the net force has to be in the same direction as the acceleration. So this force has to be bigger than that one. Writing Newton's second law, we have our center pointing forces minus the ones that are pointing outward. So FT minus FG equals M times the acceleration.